This is my interview with writer, director, producer, and star Caitlin Sponheimer about Wild Goat Surf. Like and subscribe for more content like this. Okay, so um, uh, what was your inspiration for Wild Gold Surf? Well, hi, Sean Kelly. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, I'm Caitlin. Um, the inspiration, yeah, we, well, I grew up going to Penticton um, with my family as a kid. And we would also do these really long road trips in our family motorhome, which is actually the motorhome that's in the film. It's Goat and Jane's. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I was in my 20s growing up. We hadn't gone back to Penticton in, in a long time, and I was having a lot of nostalgia over that. So I started to craft that story, but it really grew once I kind of started to mm -hmm. do more research on the Okanagan and not just um, not just like pulling from my own memories of how great it was in the summer, but mm -hmm. also what it's like when when it's not a tourist town. So um, how much of a challenge was it finding the right girl to play goat? Uh, yeah, this. Yeah, it's, that's a it's an in, it's interesting because I get asked that about goat a lot. And the real challenge was finding Nate. Um, we saw so many people for Nate, um, but Shaylin Martin, who plays goat, she really carries the film. So it was actually quite a, we were, we were concerned about it. Like, are we going to find this person? Is it going to be, is she going to be able to carry the film? And for a while we were kind of offering it to skaters, like young skater girls that we were kind of hoping they could act. And we did this first round of auditions like a year before and Shaylin was one of the first people to audition, sent in a tape. We, and then we went about the process. We, we did like a ton of other auditions and we just weren't seeing somebody. We saw a lot of great young actors, but we weren't seeing someone that like had that raw readiness that we wanted in GOAT. And then we went back to Shaylin's tape because there was this like middle part that they didn't edit out. It was definitely a mistake in between the two scenes. Um, and she's just like, very independent and snarky herself, Shaylin, like in that tape, talking back to whoever she, whoever she was working with for it. And I was like, oh, that's go. That's who she is. So we called her back. She had an incredible callback. She's the only person we called back and I read with her and um, she was just so good. Like she, she can just do anything. Like her imagination, I think, is just so strong and she's so present. So yeah, I feel very grateful to find her and, and, um, yeah, she's going to have a, a great career, I think. Well, you brought it up. So uh, could you talk about the casting of Nate and the uh, friendship Gold develops with him in the film? Yeah, for sure. So Nate was a Nate was challenging um, because he's, he's such a just like Goat, such a complicated character and some very challenging scenes for a young actor to portray with a lot of honesty and um, sincerity. And we found like Nate has to get really angry at some point. And we found a lot of really amazing actors that were struggling with with, um, I think, allowing themselves to be angry, like allowing themselves to feel angry. And we we went through the process of of just we must have seen like we saw so many, so many young actors. Um, and finally, Leandro came around and um sent in a really solid tape and when we did a call back and really like explored the anger that Nate does feel at some point and where it comes from and like had a bit of a longer call back and talked about the character uh it was he just really understood it and understood the depth that that Nate needed to have um and then the relationship between the kids we did actually do a chemistry read between them and a, and a few other options for Nate with Shaylin because she was our first um, one cast. And then we based everybody else kind of around that. Mm -hmm. And they just had like immediately such a great connection. And then when they met, we we went early to Penticton and uh, I had re did rehearsals with all the kids, but especially a lot with Shaylin and Leandro. And before they even showed up to the first rehearsal, they had met at the, the hotel or where, wherever, yeah, at the hotel. And they like immediately were so close. Like it was so cool to see. Um, so that was just, they're, they're going to be like lifelong friends, I think. And I, I felt as a director so lucky. Like I was like, oh, if we can just film them, like I would just see them hanging out and me and Joe would be like, oh, do we just like get them? Joe, Joseph Schwerz, the DP, were like, do we just kind of like try to shoot them when they don't know? And then we'd all like go quiet on set and be like, 
they would catch on pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, for uh, much of the film, uh, Jane is like an absentee parent working two jobs, and um, Goat is like idolizing her dead father through surfing magazine. So, uh, <laughs> what you what would you what would you say is the state of the relationship Jane has of Goat when the film commences? I think they have a very beautiful relationship, despite it being a bit uncouth. I don't know why my mind's using that word, but uh, yeah, I think I think there's a, a deep mutual understanding between them, between Jane and Goat, of what their relationship is, and there's so much love there, and I think that Goat doesn't know different, and so she might see, like, I think there were scenes that we did cut where Goat was seeing Nate's relationship with his parents and seeing the things that they had and kind of like absorbing that her life was different. And I I think Jane understands Goat's attachment or grief towards her dad because I think that idolization of her father is actually a very deep amount of pain of somebody not being there. I don't think it's really like, I think her want to surf is, I think that's how she can feel close to him. And I think Jane understands that. I think she misses him too. And I think Goat is almost like a parent. Like Goat kind of parents herself and even takes care of Jane in certain ways. And, and there's definitely an immaturity to Jane that I think she's trying to overcome. She's trying to do some good stuff, but doesn't always get there. So I think on a kind of like related note, um, while Jane is away, Goat often commits like petty crimes. So <laughs> would you would you would you say that um, Jane was truly unaware of these or if she just like let them happen because Jane's not an up and up person herself, subletting the house and such? Yeah, I, I think it's not till the end that Jane sees. I, I don't think Jane's stupid. I think she's smart. I think maybe she chooses sometimes like I have other problems and, you know, like I, I think I think she probably knows Sharon's telling her the truth. Like she knows goat stealing. She knows she gets it. And that was actually like a scene that was also cut was Jane and Goat having a really lovely conversation about it. But Jane wasn't punishing her. She was just kind of like, we can't do those things. And it was that it was like for Jane, I think it's retaining some integrity in a life that she feels she doesn't have much integrity. So it's like, how dare Sharon call her out? But in private, she talks to Goat like we can't do those things. And we see a moment of that later when they're sitting in the bathtub and she says that and then goat says but you do and i think it's in that moment that jane is like oh i do like i i do this and i thought i was the adult and i thought i thought i could do it because i'm older but you're seeing my actions and i love that goat is teaching her something but goat like for me um as the writer of it not the the character in the moment but as the writer goat steals and this is a thing with kleptos like kleptomaniacs is a lot of times they develop that addiction or that need because they feel such a deep loss of control in their life that the only way for them to control something is like I have control over taking this I have control over stealing this I like and so putting making go take those things it wasn't from a lack of maybe part of it was like an exterior exterior motive of like I don't have enough money, but I think a big part of it was like, she doesn't have control. So it's really, that's another expression of her lack of control, her grief, the situation she's experiencing. And, and as like a, a younger person, not able to know what that is and not able to deal with it in maybe a healthier way or have a mother who could teach her in a healthy way. Well, you already mentioned your uh, personal connection with the RV. So um, could you talk about, um, Jane's attachment to the RV, which uh, at one point she gets angry at Goat for painting it. Yes. <laughs> uh, we actually painted it. Uh, <laughs> and it is, it's actually recited by my dad, who is alive <laughs> and very well. Um, but yeah, that for Jane, mm -hmm. um, that RV, and I don't want to reveal like too, too yeah. much stuff. I'm, so, I'm also so you're asking such cool questions um but for Jane like that is that's her home mm -hmm. um sure they sublet but like that's where they're living mm -hmm. and it also is it's clays like that's what she has from him and so it means so much to her and I think that's as 
how Goat is attached to this idea of him surfing. I think this home, this RV represents who Clay was to her, even if he wasn't a big part of her life when he was around. I think that's where she finds it. And so when she paints it, it feels like such a dishonor to Jane. And I think Goat could have painted anything else. And I think Jane could have given a shit. Like, you know, like she would have been like, okay, like Sharon would have yelled if she painted the bathrooms or whatever. And it's like, Jane would have been like, okay, we'll clean it off, you know? But the RV was like, it hurt her because it was like, you're dishonoring your dad. So most most, most of the film is Goat's story, but there is kind of like one moment for Jane where pretty much she had enough and like loses her temper at a customer in the salon she's working at. So uh, what, what would you say that is Jane's mindset at this point? <laughs> Loses her temper. I love that, like, synapse. Um, yeah, it's funny. That scene was taken out for a long time because me and Sarah Trudell, the editor, who's brilliant, we we had, like, a really long cut, too long. So we were cutting, figuring out what story, and we kept going back to, like, this is goat story. So, like, and we had moments of Jane in that affected goat story. Um, but other than that, we were always with goat, like you you said. Um, and so we actually removed that scene for a long time. And we had uh, some of our exec producers really missed it. And it became a lot of discussion over if we needed to see that side of Jane and see kind of that like end of like she's hit she's hit a wall there. And. I think like her, what's her state there? I would like call it like all is lost moment. And Jane is not somebody to like go and sob and cry. Like she'll show that vulnerability to her daughter, but she, she wouldn't in front of a customer. She wouldn't be like, I've had a hard day. You know, like she, instead it became like you, you're my problem to anybody could have walked in and she would have, she was, she was ready to pick a fight and she was trying not to like we see it at the beginning she's like no i'm ha she had a bad day she has to go to work at a crappy job and then this entitled woman comes in like it was that draw that broke the camel's back and she would never ever express that to goat in that way and i think that's what makes their connection so cool but it's it was safe for jane to express it to a stranger mm -hmm. and then she knows right after she's done there like she knows and yeah i mean it was definitely very fun to play so i'll conclude by asking um what do you hope audiences take away from wild goat surf yeah um i think for me th there's a lot of different levels in the film and different parts one could connect to and i think that each individual is going to latch onto the part of the story that resonates with them. And so I hope that people watch it, absorb the story, absorb the emotions and the characters and take away what resonates with them, what connects to them. I'm putting something out there uh, as an expression of myself. And I feel like now it's, now it's everybody's. And, you know, I've heard different things I didn't even think of that people absorbed from it and that is so cool to me so now it has its own now it has its own life and and whatever whatever resonates and i want to hear i want to hear those things i think it's so cool when you make something and then someone's like oh i felt this i took this away and that reminded me of this from my childhood and that's so cool like that's the point of of art and um expression and, and storytelling really all right Thanks. <laughs> hey, thanks so much, Sean. It was really lovely to talk to you. I appreciate you having me on. Okay.